Have you ever purchased a brand new ingredient and then had no idea how to actually include it in a formulation? Or perhaps you've been wanting to create something totally new to you, but you have no idea where to start. I ran into these challenges all the time when I first started making, but then I discovered an amazing free resource that helped me seriously level up my formulation skills fast. So in this video, I'm going to share a sort of secret resource that will help you understand how all sorts of different products are structured, show you how to use new to you ingredients and find new uses for old ones, empower you to begin creating your very own formulations, and best of all, it is completely free. As awesome as this resource is, it isn't perfect, so I'm also going to share the downsides and how to sidestep them so you can get the most out of it. Now, before we can get into things, we've got to take a quick trip to my kitchen. This is relevant, I promise. Okay, so what do these kind of random <laughs> items of food have in common. They've all got recipes printed on them. So you can use these canned tomatoes to make a bean salad. Here's how to use this curry sauce to make a chicken curry. And here's how you can turn these chocolate chips into chocolate chip cookies. The last bottle of ketchup I finished even had a recipe for the great Canadian ketchup cake on it. I await the day I feel brave enough to give that a try. My point is, it's really common for food companies to share recipes that use their products. So you know how to use them, you create delicious things with their products, and then you buy their products again and again. These recipes are all over their websites, packaging, and social media, because food companies know their free recipes help sell their products. But what does this have to do with formulation? A lot, actually. The companies that make and sell cosmetic ingredients know, and do, the same thing. Just like food manufacturers, companies like Crota, Sepik, and Colonial Chem share heaps of completely free formulations using their ingredients. They want you to see how versatile their products are, feel confident using them, create products that require them, and then buy lots of their stuff. So it's very much in their best interest to share sample formulations with their potential customers. Once you know where to look, you can find manufacturer formulations for everything under the sun. Shampoos, balms, lotions, conditioners, creams, serums. If it exists, you can find 50 formulations for something similar. It's honestly kind of mind boggling. You might be thinking this cornucopia of Formulations is the answer to your DIY all the things prayers, but I'm afraid it's not quite that simple. I refer to these sample formulations all the time, but not usually to actually make them. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but they're actually much more useful as part of my research and formulation development process than as a source of ready to make formulations. One way I use these formulations all the time is as part of the live ingredient list analysis sessions I do over on Patreon. Every month we break down the ingredient list for a store-bought product to learn how it's put together and see if it stands up to the marketing claims. Earlier this year we examined the eye-wateringly expensive La Prairie Pure Gold Radiance Cream to see what could possibly make it cost over a thousand dollars. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in joining in on, please consider becoming a patron at the exclusive videos tier. Of course, I will be sharing all my favorite places to find these free formulations, but first I need to show you what to look for and how to use the formulations, because if you dive right in, you'll probably think I have seriously oversold this whole thing and you won't actually learn anything useful. The first challenge with supplier formulations can leave you feeling like you're reading a different language. Let's take a look at this Stepan Gentle Cleansing Hair Oil formulation to sort of show you what I mean. So sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, baobab oil, like I know what those things are, but then Stepan Mild GCC and Biosoft N411 Ninol CAA. What is this stuff? 
These are the trade names for products, very likely the Stepan products that this formulation is designed to showcase. And so these are the, the ketchup in our ketchup cake. Sample formulations are usually full of trade names. Some companies are nice enough to provide the inkies along with the trade names, but between trade names and new to you inkies, you're gonna have to do some Googling to figure out what they're using and what it does. Once you know what they're using, you'll almost certainly be left with some serious ingredient FOMO because the chances that you actually have all of the ingredients that the formulation calls for, they're not great. There's a massive world of ingredients out there that we simply can't get unless we want to start up a company and order a drum or a skid. And this is never more painfully obvious than when you are looking through supplier formulations. There definitely are formulations out there that you will be able to make as written, but even with my huge ingredient inventory, I find it's pretty rare. So here's what I do. I research the ingredients to learn more about them so I can better understand why they're there. Then I'll look at a bunch of other similar formulations to try to identify trends. If, for example, you're looking for clues on how to use a new to you emulsifier, start by bringing up lots of formulations that use that emulsifier, and then look for the patterns. How much are they using in proportion to the amount of oil in the formulation? You're likely going to find a range across several formulations, and then that gives you a great place to start your own formulation work. If you're looking for ideas on how to structure a new to you type of formulation, look for patterns in phase sizes, key ingredients, and more. This is just like looking at lots of sandwich recipes and realizing the important thing is the bread and the fillings. Once you've teased that structure out, you know where to start formulating. When in doubt, look at more formulations from other sources, and remember that Google is your friend. Now that we've cleared the ingredients section, let's take a look at the instructions, where you're likely to find reference to even more things you don't have. Manufacturer formulations are written by people with labs for people with labs. For example, most emulsions will include instructions to use a homogenizer. Don't be discouraged by this, though. It's essential you remember that manufacturer formulations are a way that works, not the only way that works. This goes for ingredients, ingredient concentrations, equipment, and manufacturing methods. If you assume their way is the only way, you'll lose out on so many amazing, fun making opportunities. If they call for a homogenizer and all you have is an immersion blender, try that and see if it works. If they call for a fancy ester and you don't have it, try one that you do have and see if that works. If it calls for a certain level of an emulsifier or says the pH has to be in a certain place, test it yourself and see. I have been pleasantly surprised many times. It's also a really good idea to remember that the manufacturers don't necessarily test the absolute limits of their ingredients, so don't feel bound by their guidelines. Just be prepared for potential flops if you do decide to uh, go rogue. Now that you know how to best use these sample formulations, basically look for patterns and trends rather than trying to make them as written, here's where to find them. So I usually look at UL Prospector first. There's literally thousands of formulations here. You do need an account, and in order to get an account, you need a business email address, or uh, Formula Botanica students can also get free accounts. Here's a selection of manufacturer and distribution websites that are free to access. You don't need an account. I have actually linked to all of these in the free partner blog post and will work to keep that list updated. So click through to the partner blog post linked in the description box below to check that out. In addition to manufacturers, many of the suppliers that we shop with also share formulations. So Lotion Crafter and Making Cosmetics have the largest databases that I have come across. But you know, check the places that you shop at because you never know what you might find. You might find an amazing treasure trove. A major bonus of supplier formulations compared to manufacturer formulations is that they use ingredients that they sell. And so even if you don't have all of the ingredients in the formulation, you know, when you're looking at it, you could actually get them if you wanted to. 
And of course, I've shared over 1,000 free formulations here on YouTube and over on my blog in the last 12 years, and you're of course very, very welcome to reference those for inspiration too. This is just one thing that seriously leveled up my formulations. This also blew my mind when I learned about it, so you should definitely click to learn more.